I'm going to take you guys through a day of eating on the carnivore diet and what we're going to do is achieve a very high vitamin and mineral intake through quality animal foods in three fairly approachable meals throughout the day, starting with breakfast. And to me, there is no more nutrient-dense food to start breakfast with than eggs. Today, I actually have some duck eggs. Now, duck eggs are available in most Asian supermarkets. I got these from a local farm. In regards to the color, uh, they are this a very specific like off-white color, and they are a bit larger than chicken eggs. In regards to nutrient profile, the cholesterol content of the egg is much higher. In correlation with that, the DHA content is also higher. So if you're consuming duck eggs, you have to consume a bit less of the duck eggs than you would chicken eggs for similar nutrition. But just in general, eggs have all of the fat soluble vitamins. So they have vitamins A, D, E, amazing source of K2. They have omega-3 fatty acid, DHA in its preformed version. So for those of you guys who don't have access to high quality fish, eggs are a great source. Fortunately, we're gonna make an omelet today and we're actually gonna put some fish roe in it. Here I have some salmon roe that I bought at my local Asian market. So, I mean, you could probably get everything I'm gonna to eat today at your local Asian market if you wanted to. The eggs are definitely on the pricey side. I paid $7 a dozen for soy-free pastured eggs. And salmon roe ikura, this was $50 a pound. I bought a quarter pound. Usually I can buy like flounder roe for a couple bucks a pound or I can get very, very cheap salmon roe in bulk. But it's out of season right now and this is all I really had access to. So we're just gonna make an omelet. Some people are concerned about the anti-nutrient in egg white avidin depleting biotin, but it's not really a concern because there's plenty of biotin in the egg yolk. One thing I will note though, is I usually do put more egg yolks than egg whites. Usually I'll reserve a couple egg whites for another recipe and I'll put extra yolks in the omelet, especially if it's not duck eggs. Since duck eggs are much richer and have a richer flavor, what I can do is I can replicate that by adding more chicken egg yolks to a chicken egg omelet if I was making that instead. I'm gonna whisk this up. Okay. So, pan's been warming up on a medium heat. I think it's a little too hot, but we're gonna roll with it anyway. So here I have some raw clarified butter. I clarify it because I'm allergic to the casein protein. The pan is a little hot, so we're gonna take it off the heat. So I'm gonna pour my eggs in. This is very easy to do. The, the key thing here is the nonstick pan and you don't want to keep the heat too hot. So we're just going to make some really soft scrambled eggs essentially. And then when they're about halfway cooked, we're just going to let it sit in the pan for a few minutes. For me, the only difficult thing with making an omelet is making sure the bottom doesn't get too brown. So the eggs are still a little wet. I'm going to lower the heat. I'm going to spoon a little butter into the omelet itself. Pour a little bit of the raw egg from the bowl into the omelet. Then really just like move the pan around on the heat to make sure that the heat distribution is even. While this finishes cooking, I'm just going to put a little bit of salmon roe in here. And you know, a tablespoon or two a day is plenty. You're getting a ton of DHA by doing this. And I mean, this isn't really necessary, but I really do enjoy emphasizing on a very high nutrient density. And I know some of you guys might have seen like Sean Baker's Instagram where he makes eggs and has wild caught salmon on the side. This is a much more nutrient dense version of that because of the quality of the eggs we're using and we're using salmon roe instead of actual salmon meat. The eggs are four to five times higher in vitamins and the salmon roe has a much higher DHA content. So we're getting a lot more bang for our buck in regards to calories versus nutrients. Um, that looks good. Okay. I'm not really doing this properly, but this will work. So I can just roll it essentially in the pan. Here we have our salmon roe omelet. The outside is I mean, it's a lot more cooked than I wanted it to be, but it's okay. All right, guys, I'm honestly, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna like this omelet because 
I tasted the salmon roe and it's extra fishy, so we'll see. I think I, I'm gonna regret adding the salmon roe to these eggs. I mean, you know, people put salmon on eggs benedict all the time, so I was like, eh, it makes sense to put salmon roe in an omelet, but we'll see. I didn't put a lot in. Salmon roe, the salmon roe is very salty. Should have rinsed it off. I think the key here is put a little extra butter in the omelet and don't use too much salmon roe. You know, even though I overcooked this, and I only used a little bit of clarified butter, this is still really good. The amount of nutrition we're getting from this meal in regards to fat type of vitamins, DHA, I mean, this is really all most people would need for a couple days to probably a week. You know, the duck eggs, granted they're high quality, have all the fat type of vitamins, and the salmon roe is literally one of the healthiest foods you can consume. Has the highest DHA content out of any food there is. That being said, next time, I would definitely have the egg separately from the salmon roe. So that's it for breakfast. The only thing additionally that I would warrant doing is, you know, this is when I would take a vitamin D3 supplement if it was necessary, you know, if I wasn't getting sun, if I wasn't going to the tanning salon. So for lunch, I'm just gonna have some steak tartare. I got some chuck roll that I've just been dicing up. It's a little bit fatty. I mean, it is a grass fed animal, so the chuck roll is not as fatty as that of a grain fed animal. But all I'm gonna do is just add a few cracks of black pepper, a pinch of salt, and I'm just gonna mix this up in a bowl. And here I have two duck eggs. Okay, so I got my duck egg yolks on the tartare. I'm just gonna put a little extra salt and some black pepper on top. And yeah, I know there's gonna be like half a dozen vegans commenting, oh, you have to season your meat to make it taste good. No, I don't. I could eat this completely raw and I will enjoy it. I like it a little better with salt and pepper. I know you guys might want to add half the pantry worth of seasoning to make your food remotely palatable. The difference is me putting salt and pepper on my steak is making it go from like 80% enjoyment to like 90% enjoyment. You putting seasoning on your vegan cardboard food is just trying to make it edible so you don't vomit. But I digress. All right guys, so I'm just gonna have the tartare. Mix in the egg yolk with the meat. In regards to what we're achieving with this meal, uh, of course the egg yolks have some nutrient density, the meat has nutrients, but it really is for calories, yes. You know, there is a considerable fat soluble vitamin content in the eggs we're having, but you know, compared to what we had for breakfast and just in general, we've already achieved the high nutrient intake for the day. This is just reinforcing that. For any of you guys with an aversion to raw meat, black pepper, salt, egg yolk makes it amazing. Even the uh, the seagulls want some. Uh, so the pepper I use is an organic Italian black peppercorn from Whole Foods. And the sea salt is just the uh, Eden Celtic sea salt. I got a bunch of Celtic salts on my Amazon shop if you guys want to check that out in the comments. But uh, that's going to be it for lunch. I'm pretty full right now. I'll probably wait a couple hours for dinner.
So for dinner, I'm having some beef short ribs. The reason I have short ribs is because it is where the animal carries fat naturally. So when we have a grass-fed cow, they're not predisposed to having as much marbling in the steaks and cuts that we're used to eating. In the case of things like short rib, brisket, belly, these very fatty cuts are what our indigenous ancestors preferred as it is the only part of the animal where these wild and grass-fed animals will actually store fat. So I got these short ribs from a local farm. As you can tell, the fat is a deep yellow, almost orange color, and the meat is a bit darker than what most people are used to seeing, even on grass-fed beef. So we're gonna take these outside, throw them on the grill, just get a quick sear on the outside, just to build some flavor and kill any bacteria that might possibly be on the outside. And part of it is to remove the negative flavor of the plastic cryovac that was on the meat. Super cold outside today. I think it's like 15 degrees. And I usually don't complain unless it gets below 20, but it is below 20, so. So for any of you guys who are unfamiliar with my grilling setup, I actually have a gas grill that I put wood in. So I broke the grates a couple months ago and I laid those grates over the burners and then I put wood on top of the grates and then I got new grates on top. So I have wood that can rest on the grates, the gas fire starts the wood very rapidly and within three to four minutes I have a raging hot wood fire that I can grill my meat on. The reason I like this is twofold. One, the flavor of the wood is unmatched and two, the fire gets much hotter much quicker. So it's literally a matter of two to three minutes most days waiting for the grill to heat up. And all I'm really doing here is I'm just going to char the outside. So we're almost done. As I said, I just want to kill any negative bacteria that might be on the meat from cross-contamination during the butchering process. And I also want to remove the negative flavor of the plastic cryovac packaging, uh, the vacuum seal that was on the meat beforehand. So I know some of you clowns might have noticed the pill case next to me earlier. And I forgot to move it out of the way, but this is my mother's. Uh, she had a double kidney transplant. She's had a lot of health problems over the past few years. So uh, she usually just leaves this on the table. And I like to think you guys would believe that I am 100% transparent with everything I do. But, you know, people with not particularly high IQs tend to try to discredit people at every chance they get. That being said, here I have the grass-fed short rib. What I actually did was cut it off the bone uh, before I put it on the plate so I didn't have to do that while eating it. And if you guys take a look, we have some beautiful yellow beef fat. All I do here, I sprinkle a little bit of salt on it. And you know, this could be tough. Uh, you just have to make sure to cut it against the grain and cut small pieces and it's fine. The fat is like grassy and nutty has this slight hint of a barnyard flavor. It's like, it's it's good. This isn't like the best grass-fed beef I've had, but it's not bad, that's for sure. And if you guys wanna see the cooking temperature on the meat, uh, as you saw earlier, all we did was sear it on the outside. So it's pretty much raw meat with just a crust on the outside, which some people call like blue rare. The yellow color of the beef fat comes from the carotenes in the grass. And if we can assume that the grass has these carotenes in it. It's also higher in the other vitamins. So not only is this grass-fed beef higher in vitamin A, it's higher in vitamin K, vitamin E, probably four to five times higher in various precursors to EPA and DHA as well, the linoleic and the linolenic acids. The reason I get into so many arguments about grain-fed versus grass-fed is because it's not really subjective. Yes, grain-fed prime ribeye dry age with proper cooking, insane amounts of marbling, salt and pepper on it, tastes good, if not better than most grass-fed steaks because people aren't used to the texture or flavor of them. But if we're comparing other cuts of meat, and most importantly, if we're comparing grass-fed versus grain-fed fat side by side, the grain-fed fat is literally inedible compared to the grass-fed fat. The grass-fed fat is soft, it's nutty, it's sweet, it has a slight grassy flavor. The grain-fed fat in its raw state 
literally tastes like off acrid plastic corn. It's without a doubt a negative flavor. By cooking the meat, by covering up the negative flavors of the grain fed beef, that is why people prefer grain fed. They're buying crappy grass fed beef and they're not cooking it properly. And I know these people haven't had high quality grass fed beef because I've worked in some of the best steakhouses in New York City. I've tasted plenty of excellent steaks and I know that this grass fed meat has a unique and better flavor than any grain fed fat I've ever tasted. Like when I bite into this grass fed beef fat, I literally think to myself, what the F? This is so good, it's crazy. I have never thought that when biting into a grain fed ribeye steak. Like look at the color on this fat. It's like orange. It's crazy, crazy good. I don't care what diet you're following, carnivore, keto, vegan, vegetarian, standard American diet, buy some high quality grass fed fatty meat, throw it on a wood fire and put some salt on it, take a bite out of it, and you know what food we've been eating throughout human history. So I'm pretty full, I'm gonna save the rest for tomorrow. If you guys are looking for high quality grass fed beef like this, definitely check out your local farmer's markets, Generally speaking, the older cows, when they're on grass, tend to have higher fat distribution as well as deeper yellow colored fat. If you guys want to check out the salt I used, any of the products I used throughout the day, uh, maybe even the cod liver oil I have on occasion, the vitamin D3 supplements, all that stuff is on my Amazon shop. You can check that out in the comments below. If you guys do want to support the channel, please subscribe and share the video. I'm also on Patreon. And you guys can reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations if you are looking to improve the nutrient density of your diet. Uh, overall, you cannot consume a higher nutrient diet than what I did today. It is literally physically impossible. Maybe you could have gotten a slightly higher vitamin A intake because I did not consume any liver today. But in regards to overall fat soluble vitamin intake, there is no parallel to the carnivore diet. If you eat like this, if you try these foods, you will feel the difference immediately. It is unbelievable. So thank you guys for watching and uh, 